For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for continuing to watch us through social media, and we especially thank First Baptist Temple, to my 8th Street Church family, to those who watch us. We all know that this is a special weekend, uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday weekend. Uh, he'd be 92 years old. And there's a spiritual parallel, I do believe, uh, to the celebration and observance of this weekend. And we find it in Exodus, the third chapter. And we begin with the third verse. And it says, Then Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to look, God called him in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And then he said, do not draw near this place. and Take off your sandals for the place where you stand is holy ground. We find Moses at this particular time herding a flock on Mount Horeb, known as the mountain of God. And he's taking care of his own business when he suddenly comes upon this burning bush, he is very fascinated. And the, the bush burns, but is not consumed by the fire. And God speaks to Moses, and he says, Moses, Moses. And Moses replies and says, here am I. And God said to Moses, Draw nigh, but pull off your sandals, because you're standing on holy ground. God said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses hid his face. And the Lord said, I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And then Moses said, When I come to the children of Israel, who shall I say sent me? And God answered saying, I am that I am, has sent me unto you. Now there's an irony here. The children of Israel had been in bondage for 400 years. And African Americans in this country were enslaved 400 years. And Moses was questioning himself because of the awesome responsibility that God had charged him with. Now, using my sanctified imagination, another Moses-like leader emerged on the American scene in the late 1950s. And his name was Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And I believe that God sent a human catalyst, or an angel by the name of Rosa Parks, a seamstress at a local department store in Montgomery, Alabama. She was just tired one day in December 1955, and she refused simply to give up her seat on a city bus to a white man. She was arrested and jailed, and Indeed, as I said, she was a catalyst of hope for what would become the civil rights movement. This one act of defiance led a 26-year-old minister to start a movement integrating the city bus system in Montgomery, Alabama. And eventually, 
the movement became known as the Journey for Civil Rights. Dr. King had just really settled into the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery. And, 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 and just like I can imagine that a voice emerged from this light saying that I am that I am sent you. It was a light from heaven. It was a light of God all by himself. And just like Moses, uh, he, we went, he went to Pharaoh and told him of his charge from God to free the children of Israel from the grips of slavery. Dr. King was charged with confronting the Pharaohs of discrimination and hate. God protected Moses and he protected Dr. King. He could have been killed in those demonstrations, but his mission of nonviolence stayed at the cross. The nonviolent civil rights movement was always a prayerful process. And even though the demonstrators were beaten and jailed and just they just kept on praying and singing, we shall overcome. When Moses told Pharaoh that God would claim the firstborn of Egypt, he finally relented and let the children of Israel start their journey to the promised land. When Dr. King's journey led to the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. in 1963, a quarter of a million people heard his I Have a Dream speech. A nation was stirred to remove the monuments of discrimination. Moses gathered the children of Israel, and they started their journey to the promised land. When Pharaoh's son was claimed by the last plague of God on Egypt, and Dr. King gathered his supporters in 1964 to destroy the gates of discrimination, when President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. We can't go back to Egypt. However, there are doubters, just like in the days of Moses, who led the children of Israel from Egypt. There were those who said, Moses, you brought us out here to die. When they heard the chariots of Pharaoh approaching, when they reached the shores of the Red Sea. And Moses simply said, stand still and see the work of the Lord. And the Red Sea was parted as Moses stretched out his rod and the children of Israel crossed safely on dry land. The Red Sea closed and drowned Pharaoh's army after the Israelites crossed. The waters of discrimination parted when Dr. King stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on a hot August day in 1963 and gave his I Have a Dream speech. A year later, he stood in the White House and witnessed the signing of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. But God wasn't through with him yet. He began a campaign for civil and voting rights that led to the famous Selma to Montgomery March in 1965 and culminated in the signing of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. This modern day Moses of the Promised Land came in April of 1968 when he was in Memphis helping sanitation workers in the strike against the city. He told them that fateful night on April the 3rd, 1968, that he had been seen the promised land. And the next day, he was killed. How vividly I can remember that. Because at that time, I was only a 24-year-old associate editor of Jet Magazine in Chicago. 
and had the privilege, if you will, to cover the assassination and funeral of Dr. King. But there are doubters today. There are doubters today, even though we have elected our first African-American president of the United States. Even though somebody marched, somebody was beaten, and even somebody died. So we can enjoy the privilege of public accommodations, live where we want to live, sleep where we want to sleep, and do what we want to do. And we still hear the chariots of discrimination and hate. But don't despair because there is a God. There is a Savior, and his name is Jesus. And we just say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. There is no other help I know. And just like Moses stretched out his rod over the Red Sea, Jesus will part the Red Seas of prejudice and make a way out of no way for you. We've already made some accomplishments in the last 50 years, and I believe that God isn't through with us yet. We still have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. And through it all, he will walk with us and carry us through. So I ask the question, is there a burning bush in your life? Has the Lord directed you to help somebody who is homeless and needs shelter? Has the Lord told you to help put some food on a table where there you can fill empty stomachs of children of poverty? There is a charge for us to keep and thank God for his grace and his mercy. Let us not forget where the Lord has brought us from because he's brought us from a mighty long way. And it's nobody but Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus, Mary's baby, the one John baptized in the Jordan and said, behold, the Lamb of God, the one who healed the sick and made the lame walk the one who made the blind see, the one who opened doors that were closed to us. There were many dangers, toils and snares. The one who was abused and beaten and ridiculed for us. The one whose head was blooded with a crown of thorns. The one who was placed on an old rugged cross where he stayed from the sixth to the ninth hour but we got a blood transfusion. The one who dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders and died. The one who was placed in a borrowed tomb. The one who stayed there all Friday night and all day Saturday and Saturday night. But early, early, I said early, on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. He got up for us to be overcomers. He got up for us to be victorious. He got up because he's God, and he's God all by himself, and the blood still works. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, as we come to observe the birthday of one of the greatest humanitarians that has ever lived, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We thank you for his life. We thank you for sending him. Because indeed, Master, he only lived a few years. As a matter of fact, 39 years. And Master, we thank you because he walked among us. He helped bring freedom to not only African-American people, but to all people. And his dream became contagious. Now, Master, we ask that you continue to let his dream live within us. Let it live within this nation that is so divided right now. Let us, let us move forward in a spirit of oneness that we might continue to make America the greatest nation that has ever known. 
We ask, Master, that you bless each and every one of us, and especially to the ones who are suffering this dreaded coronavirus. Master, we ask our blessings upon them. Touch them with a healing hand. We ask that you raise them up and restore them to their daily activities. Father, we just ask it in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Continue to walk with us. Continue to be with us. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.